My goodness sake, folks, we're cooking for fall already. Can you believe it? Come on over, see what I got going on. Extra good today, right here on my take on Home and Garden. Folks, today I'm doing a special dish for you. Right now I've got some boiling water on the stove and I've got bacon. Bacon going on. Now we already got it started, so we don't have to wait. Also, I got the oven preheating at 400. Let me get this bacon flipped over. Now don't worry, you're thinking, what has he got going on with bacon? I thought we were doing dinner. Oh yes, it's dinner, all right. Hang in there. One box, one pound or 16 ounce of your favorite large seashells in the pot. In the pot they go. Give it a stir. We're doing my infamous fall supper deluxe. Okay, we're doing a shells mac and cheese with bacon in it. We're doing cornbread with a special chutney that goes on top. We're doing acorn squash. And what else have I got over here? I think that's about, oh, for you low carbers, like Angela, we're gonna do a low carb mac and cheese too. Right here today. Guys, check it out. We're just popping, snapping, and we are cooking. First thing I wanna do is get my mixing bowl and make sure you can see. <laughs> so what's next? Two wonderful Jiffy cornbread. You can use your own brand, your own kind if you want. We still love the Jiffy. Hard to beat. Even the price. Even with all the stupid prices today, it's still a buy. Okay, two of them. Might look like a little bit of a repeat to you. One can of cream corn. Okay, two eggs. Beat until we're mixed. Now we're gonna get our measuring cup and we're gonna get one third of milk for each box. That's two thirds. There it is. And we're gonna pick up as we go. You know that, so we're not gonna have a big giant mess at the end. The mess is what keeps people from cooking, I think. It keeps them from wanting to do it at all, which is a shame. You know, it just makes it a shame. Now we're looking more like it. Now adding the cream corn to the corn muffin mix, we're gonna bake at 400 for 15 to 20 minutes, but I'll tell you the can of corn is gonna add about eight or 10 minutes, just so you know. 
can we see? So I'm not in the way. Wonderful. We're going to let that steep a minute. And we're going to get out our Pyrex dish. Actually, we're going to get out two. We're going to get out one for the muffins and one for the mac and cheese. Oh. And one for the acorn squash. <laughs> How about that? Oh, we're, while we're down here, right? We'll get them all out. Oh man, that bacon's ready to turn. We'll turn some bacon. And this is the 12 ounce pack. You know, that used to be 16 ounce for less money. Now it's 12 ounce for almost twice as much money. I'm gonna take our Crisco all vegetable shortening. Okay guys, we're stirring our macaroni and we're gonna make a test on this for tenderness. You get so you can actually feel it on the spoon, how they hit it, if you're used to cooking. I can tell, I'm not even taking one out, it's not ready. That's how you get. Okay, next we're gonna put a little Crisco swipe on our cornbread dish. Little swipe. Anybody lost? Nobody should be lost yet. <laughs> We're going to fill our baking dish with the wonderful cornbread mixture. I know I showed this recipe before. I don't know if anybody tried it yet. I think a couple of you said you did do that on your own anyway. Now we'll get some water in that bowl right away so that it's not all stuck on and dried on a big mess while other things are happening. And we're going to put our cornbread in the oven. We're going to watch that right around 22 minutes. All righty, getting close on that macaroni. And the bacon is just oh, making your mouth water. I don't know what else to tell you. Can you see it? Okay, that's finishing up. Now we're gonna take our pepper and onion blend we're going to get about a cup and a quarter, maybe, of that. We're going to get our chopper. And we're going to get a smaller frying pan like this. And we're going to go to the back just for now. Let's chop our pepper and onion mix. Man, I love these mixes. They're ready to go, fresh frozen. Where are you gonna go? I don't know. You can do this fresh, of course. You wanna take extra time. We always have fresh pepper and onion in the fridge. But I kinda like saving those for salad. You guys know that anyway. I'm going to finish chopping this real fine. And all you modernists out there that think it's better to use a machine and get this zip, zip, get this all done, just think about what I'm doing while you're cleaning all that parts and pieces. <laughs> while you're cleaning, I'm eating. 
Okay, now we're draining our shells. We're going to keep that just half off the heat. We're going to put a little milk in the bottom of our pan that came off for the noodles. About a third cup, I think. A couple of noodles that didn't want to come out of there. Okay, now we're back in control, I think. And let's see, I'm gonna switch these and bring this pan up to the front so you can see. We're gonna put our peppers in this small frying pan. Get them to, they're, they're all totally thawed out here. We're gonna get them calmed down and start cooking. Now I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. I want those to just about melt. And then speaking of melt, we gotta get our cheese going. We're gonna take our Velveeta. You're familiar with this one. We're gonna take half of the Velveeta, so that's a pound out of the two pound pack. Cover the end. Get it back in its box, what we didn't use. And once that's open, that's gotta go in the fridge. You know, it didn't have to go in the fridge till, till just now. Let's mix our pepper mixture and onion. I'm turning the bacon off. The bacon is done. That can sit there with that off. It's not going to hurt anything. This, <laughs> this Velveeta is wanting to melt already. It's so warm with everything going on in the kitchen. So I'm going to cut wedges and we're going to start melting that in the pan. If it's stone cold and solid, do like the package says and cut cubes. But I'm telling you, we don't need cubes. This is soft right now. Now I want to get that back burner on a little bit. That was off. Next, about a cup and a half of shredded cheddar cheese into the pot for our mixing. Now we're ready for what is still steamy, our shells. Okay, we're gonna get them in. Couple of jumpers, not bad. You jumpers, get back here. Now that's on top of the cheese and it's just going to help melt that in. Let's finish our chutney. Some of you are going, what in the world is that? What's he talking about? Well, a chutney is almost started out like a bean dip, but there's several variations now depending on where you go. I'm gonna put one little pad of butter in the peppers and about four in the mac and cheese. Let's make sure everybody can see and give that a stir. Okay, plastic spoon is not really doing it now. This I'm gonna turn down to warm. Now we have a nice kind of a toasty 
this is right where we want to be with these peppers. Peppers and onions, kind of a toasty consistency there. All right, here's the secret. Can of crushed pineapple. We're going to use half of it. Okay. I'm going to stir this and let you just get a good look at that. How are we doing on our cornbread? We got seven minutes left. Orange marmalade. Well, we want a healthy scoop of that. If you could smell this wonderful peppers and pineapple. Oh my goodness. Lord. I need a real spoon in mixing that cheese. Now, speaking of spoon, we're going to get two big swipes of that orange marmalade. Whoops. Was there an extra little bit that went in there? Okay. And we'll do another spoon. And we're going to continue to mix this and turn it all down. Oh my goodness sake, look at this. This is your chutney. Fruit, pepper and onion chutney. And we're going to just let that kind of steep. And put our butter away and our jam away since we opened it. Let's stir our mac and cheese. Oh my guys. Look at this. It's starting to look like something. Oh man. Nice. Okay, we're gonna Turn that chutney down and we're going to add a little more milk to our mac and cheese. Now you cooks know you got to go by ear a little bit once in a while. See how your thing's coming along. You make adjustments like you need. Now I'm going to move a couple things around and that cornbread's coming out in three and a half minutes. And we're going to see where we're at, and I can tidy up a bit. Okay, we took a look at our cornbread, and it needs a couple more minutes. We turned our bacon off, our chutney off. The mac and cheese is just steeping and melting all in. Oh my goodness, it looks just incredible. And we're going to prepare this acorn squash. Now, if you guys watched before, you might have heard me. If you don't like squash, you need to go to the doctor. There's something wrong with you. Because this is just unbelievable. We'll look at that on from this side. Go with three pieces each half just be careful because it is a quite a cut for them now I like a filleting knife or an ice cream scoop you've seen me use okay to get the seeds out of here. A 
couple of ways to go here. I just get so excited about these because they're so good. And everybody in this house thinks the same way. It's almost dessert. <laughs> okay, it's almost dessert. We're going to look at our cornbread. Couple, couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. And we got porky. We can set that on. Doing good. And we're gonna trade that out. So I wanna finish with a little olive oil here. All righty. Also, you reduced carb people. Frozen cauliflower in the mic. Six minutes right now. And we're gonna get that going. And now we're gonna switch out our cornbread and our squash. The squash could have been done way ahead, but honestly, I just think the cornbread's done ahead, so it's almost no difference to, to me here. Oh, this is smelling good. Really golden, and I'm, I'm gonna just let that ride just a little bit. It's starting to golden up. And I'm gonna put the squash in. Because that's gonna be 45 minutes. We got a cauliflower out. Can you see that cornbread? Oh, puffy and wonderful. Now we're heating up a pan here and we have a half a cup of shredded cheese and we have our cauliflower. So also about eight good cubes of Velveeta here cut up and that's the steamable and I don't know if you guys are used to it but we love it and it really works out nice now what's he doing well I want to chop that fine so it's more like a mac and cheese dish just a little extra effort it's really not that bad Okay, we're gonna get that heat in here now on that cheese to help meld it in. We'll get that stirring up. Then we need our butter and our milk. Three pats third a cup of milk and we're going to get that back on the heat and let that just meld in meld in the wonderful okay now still working <laughs> I hear a couple people out there that's too much I wouldn't do that I couldn't do that Big Pyrex dish. Olive oil in the bottom. We're gonna put our mac and cheese in the Pyrex dish. Here's our wonderful dish. Just started. This pot is gonna get washed. Next, I've got to cut up this bacon. Okay, I'm gonna put our wonderful bacon, look at this, all on here and get that just cut up real fine. I don't know how you get rid of bacon grease, but 
when there's not too much and while it's still warm, not too hot, I like putting some paper towel in that pan and let it start doing the work and absorbing that oil for me. Okay, so it's not a big hassle. Next over here, to finish our mac and cheese dish while we're waiting for our beautiful acorn squash to finish, we're chopping this incredible bacon. Listen to that crunch. That's pretty nice. Let's look at the low carb dish. Okay, we're going to turn that down to melt. We're going to put some bacon on top. Look at this, so pretty. There's our low carb dish. Here's our all carb dish. Bacon on the top. A little more for the low carb. Because bacon fat is not carbs. If this don't make you hungry, you don't even have an appetite. Now I just lightly, lightly want to go over the top of this. See how ever so light? With some Italian breadcrumbs. Italian breadcrumbs, not on the low curb. We're going to move this. And we're going to warm that back up. Small burner. Low. We're getting everything caught up and ready here, guys. And then now I want a couple pats of butter on the top of that mac and cheese to counter the breadcrumbs and give it that little crispy top. There's a warning here. You may possibly have to make this dish again if you let people eat it. <laughs> Alrighty, this is going in the bottom of the oven and it's not going to take long. About 20 minutes, maybe 26, the squash has got left. I'm predicting they're going to be done just about the same time at 400. We can take that down to 350. Alrighty, look at that. Oh man, I got to try this. We'll be right back. Guys, I just cut that cornbread. It's like a souffle, okay? And we're adding the mixed pepper and onion and fruit chutney on over and to the side of the cornbread deluxe. Look at this. I got the mac and cheese out of the oven. couple more minutes on the acorn squash. I'm going to serve the cornbread. The dinner where we're eating on tonight is made in Bohemia, Czechoslovakia, before their country split. And the plate is called wild flour. Let's look at this mac and cheese and shells and bacon and cheese. <laughs> oh boy, there's going to be a stampede soon.
bread with sweet pepper chutney, acorn squash, and mac and cheese and bacon. Thanks guys. And we'll see you in the next over the top baking show for fall video.